Hey everyone. Alright, everything seems to be working. So uh, today I'm going to be um, adding another mix generator to this project, Conduit. So Conduit is basically a framework that allows you to um, essentially build a broker. It looks something like this that allows you to essentially describe uh, the things you want to exist in your message queue. Um, a set of pipelines um, and plugs that you basically want to apply to messages coming in and out of your system. Um, and then uh, subscribers who are going to receive messages and then um, essentially these publishers which uh, are how you send messages out. Um, so uh, in the on Tuesday and I forget when I did it before but um, I worked on uh, building a generator for essentially the broker file, which is this guy. Um, and today I'm going to be working on uh, building a generator for a subscriber. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, let me know if uh, anybody watching has any questions. So the first thing we're going to do, so I've already created the file, uh, but it's blank. Um, I'm actually just going to steal some stuff from here real quick. So this is going to be gen subscriber, subscriber, and we're pulling in, uh, so we're making a mixed task. And we're also pulling in mix generator, um, which provides a couple of functions that are helpful. Um, so since we use mix tasks, that's going to give us the task behavior. And so we needed to find a run. And there we're going to get past args, uh, like so. So let's real quick just do what we expect this uh, to receive. So it's going to be mix conduit gen subscriber. All right, so um, one thing we will need to know is um, something similar to what we set up with the broker. So we want to know essentially which app to add it to, um, which we'll know automatically just based off of the um, mix, mix project config. And then um, we'll wanna know stuff like which broker um, the user specified. Um, so we can essentially change um, the directory if they've done that. So we won't need adapter because nothing will be specific to the um, to the uh, nothing in the subscriber is specific to any particular adapter. So let's go over here and we're going to add this. Um, so here we actually want to. Let's call that broker module. All right. So, um, all right. So, one thing we need to do is generate a file, um, and then the other thing we need to do is. Um, tell the user about other things that they need to insert in order to uh, see, um, uh, in, in order for that thing to be hooked up. So let's go ahead and, whoops, this guy. Um, we can take a look at um, how we're embedding a template. So we're going to want to do something similar. Uh, 
um, same thing for the info. So I'm going to do embed template. I'll give it a name. So here will be a subscriber. And then we give that a string. So I'm just going to write out the code that um, I would expect here, and then I can fill it in with variables later. Um, so my app foo subscriber do and um, so this is going to use conduit subscriber and then it's going to have a perform function which is going to take a message and ops and then it's going to return a message And then here is where um, uh, you do the magic that you do <laughs> when you're pre processing a message. Um, so, All right, so let's just start filling this out. So one thing I'm noticing, I forgot about the fact that you need to name your subscriber. So let's give that a name. Name. So that'll be one of the args. Um, so let's do case args do And if we get nothing there, then we're going to raise argument exception or uh, argument error and say um, uh, name is a required argument. And then if we get name and we're just going to ignore everything else, so we're going to use underscore there. Um, then we're going to do uh, the actual stuff. Um, so here we can do um, signs equals, and then we'll pass keyword list. Um, so one thing we'll want is just the name. Um, so we're actually going to, we're never going to use this name directly. So we're going to, to do get name, name, and we're going to find a helper function for that. And then what we can do here is we can generate this name. <clears throat> so um, let's see. So name is going to be something like foo, and we want to turn it into foo subscriber. So we can use macro dot. Let's. I forget the function name. So macro dot. Camelize who actually what does a camelize do if you give it okay good enough uh, what if you give it That's cool. Um, so we're going to do camelize name, and then we're going to join that with subscriber. So that'll be our name. 
and we're going to go ahead and replace this with, uh, actually, let's call that subscribe name. All right, so then let's see, we'll just get the subscriber name. And then here we can uh, replace this with some uh, EEX. So we can say at subscriber name, and we'll pass that, we'll pass this along whenever we call this function. All right, so um, the next thing we need here is this my app bit. Um, so we'll get it from the broker module, unless that's not defined, um, would, in which case we'll infer it from the app that this project is in. So let's do, um, let's see. I can just crib this from here, but basically there's a so basically since we're inside of a mixed project, we can get the project config, get the app that's defined. So that would be this guy here, um, and use that. So we're going to grab that. So that's going to give us the app, um, but what we're interested in is the module name. Um, and so since we won't actually use the app anywhere else here, I'm just going to change this to um, get parent module. And this will be, um, so they can pass in the broker module here. Um, I'm going to do the case where they don't pass it in. So I'm going to do nil as an argument here. And then I'll do another case for when it's not nil. So here we have the app name, which will be conduit in my case. And what I want to do is then um, macro.camelize that. And then I will have essentially um, Oh, actually, uh, I take that back. I want to do one other thing. So um, I need to uh, append Q, which is actually let's do underscore Q because the app name will be snake case. Um, but then I can do macro that camelize on it. So the way to think about this is here we have some config. Whenever we do this, we'll get conduit, the atom. Here we'll have the string conduit. Then we'll add um, Q to it. And then finally, we'll camelize that. So the end result here will be um, conduit Q. And so this will vary based on which project you're in. So if you have a project called My App, it'll be My App Q. Something like that. Cool. Okay, so we've got this function here. We can do parent module. Equals get parent module. Um, and then <coughs> we're going to want to parse some args to basically check for this. Um, 
So let's do that real quick. Um, actually, so this is typically called argv. Um, so we're going to get um, our options. Let me take a look at how we've done that before. It's basically this. Shouldn't be there. All right, so we're going to have something like this. Um, so here it takes the args that get passed into the mix command, so everything from here on. And it's going to split it into switches and into um, argv. So switches will be everything that has a switch, and then argv will be anything that isn't a switch, so any normal parameters. So we pass args into option parser at parse. We tell it strict that whenever it gets called, we want it to um, I'm just going to change that to broker, actually. We tell it um, what options we want the user pass. Um, and it basically checks to make sure that uh, the user is passing those. And the strict here um, basically says if you pass any flags, they have to be in this set. Um, so basically we'll get an error message if you pass a flag that's not in the set there. So if maybe you thought, I don't know, dash A was the flag I was supposed to pass, um, this will give you an error in that case. So now we've got our switches in our argv. We're checking to make sure that we've got a name. Um, if we don't have a name, we raise an error. And so now we can pass in um, switches broker here. And so if we don't have a broker, it'll call get parent module with nil. And what we can do now is also define get parent module when it's not nil. Um, so when it's not nil, we'll have broker module here. And what we can do is um, broker module string.split. And so we want to split it on um, dot. So let's just write out some examples of what the values are. So this will be something like my app q. Dot broker. Then when we split it, we'll get a list of strings with the first one being my app queue and the second one being broker. And what we want to do is essentially ditch the last element and pull everything earlier than that. Um, so it's not sufficient for us to just say like element zero here. We want to get every element except for the last one. Um, so the best way I know how to do that is, um, let's see, enum.drop, I believe. Um, so enum. Actually, it might be delete. Drop. So I believe maybe it's list actually. Yeah, it's a list dot delete at. Um, so if you have a list with two elements in it, or actually let's put three in there. If we want to get rid of element number three, and 
Uh, it's kind of annoying to figure out what's the last element. You can actually just pass negative one here. And that basically just means uh, last element, element in list, negative two would be this guy, negative three would be this guy. So if we do that, then you see we get back a list of everything except for the last element. So let's do a list.delete at, and then negative one. So that'll produce um, my app Q. So this is still in a list. Um, so we want to then turn it back into um, a module name. And so if there were multiple items there, we would join it with, uh, um, we would join it with dot. In this case, when we join it with dot though, it'll just return the single string here with no dots in it. Use list.join, right? Let's see join. I sometimes forget, uh, which is where. So enum.join will then produce just this guy, like so. All right, so now we should have a parent module um, in both cases. And so we'll be able to do We'll be able to use that here. So parent module. That'll be the same. That'll be the same. And that'll be the same. Um, so the next thing we'll need is um, a file name, a place to write the actual file. So, um, Let's do file name. So this will be just um, the name of the file, uh, not the path leading up to it. Uh, what do I do here? I call it file. So I'm going to want to do both of these two things, but um, we will figure those out. Um, so parent module. Um, is one thing we'll need. And then here, uh, what we want is actually name. So let's do the name, uh, the file one first, because that one will be easiest. So let's do get file. We have a name. So that name will be something like foo. We want to turn that into um, who's subscriber dot x um, and so we can uh, just do actually so let's start with name let's do macro dot um, underscore and then we can append to the end of that Um, underscore subscriber dot x. So that'll be the file name. And then the path, um, we can do that by, so what do we pass there? We pass parent module. So what we're interested in from getting here is the um, a couple pieces. So we're gonna do path.join and pass a list. So the first thing we're gonna put in the list is lib because um, that's where we want our source to live. The next thing um, will be the parent module. Um, 
So here we can just do macro dot underscore um, parent module. I believe that does what I want, but I'm going to double check that. So if I have macro dot underscore, <coughs> and let's say the parent module's name is foo dot bar dot baz. Uh, what you see is it actually puts slashes into the name when it underscores. So um, it basically handles the um, situation of this having multiple dots in the path. So then the last thing that um, we want to add here is the folder that the subscriber is going to live under. So we're going to call that subscribers. So that'll be our get path. And then um, here we're going to pass in parent module. Like so. And then we can call um, create file, I believe. I'm just going to steal this real quick. So we're going to change that to Create subscriber. Um, and so we're going to pass in path, and we're going to pass in file. File. All right. So here we're going to create the directory. So that's going to create lib my app subscribers if it doesn't exist. Then we want to create the file. So this will be the subscriber file, um, which will be a combination of the path and the file. So we create a file called subscriber file, and we're going to use the subscriber template, which is the function that's defined by this macro here. So subscriber template will get appended to it. And then it'll return um, essentially the compiled version of this string um, as an EAX template. So basically what we get back is a string um, and it'll fill in each of the variables that we specified here. This needs an app. All right, so that's subscriber template, assigns, and then we're going to display info with the subscriber info template and we're going to pass the sign to that so we haven't defined that yet so let's do that real quick but we're just going to leave it blank all right so that should be good enough um, for that let's go ahead and create some tests for this um, so, inside of our test directory, let's create a file, conduit, gen, subscriber test. Um, so, def module, conduit, uh, actually, we need mix, task. It's easier if I just copy this. So I can want this. And then add test to it. Um, so we're going to use executing case and async true. Uh, yeah, that should be fun. Um, Uh, 
I'm wondering if I actually want that to be async because we're going to do stuff in the temp directory and this also does stuff in the temp directory. Um, what did I put this one for? I said true for that. Um, I'm going to leave it true for both of them and then just see what happens. Um, so let's describe run one. <clears throat> so we're going to do similar test cases to what we've done here. Um, one is just we want to assert that um, it raises an exception when an invalid switch is passed to this. Um, so let's actually alias our generator. Um, so it's basically this that we're going to do as um, gen subscriber. So whenever we pass foo and something broken, um, we should expect that to raise an error. So let's run that. Uh, so test mix task condo gen subscriber. So um, I have an undefined function inside of my subscriber create file. So my expectation is that I'm actually getting that from this. And since I don't see that working, I should double check to make sure that that's where that comes from. Um, so let's do, um, actually, let's see here. So mix generator provides the functions create file three. So I'm passing a path contents so path and contents. Hmm. Oh, I should have called create subscriber here and passed the signs. All right, so we have undefined function info. So that's because I didn't uh, import this guy. So when I import that, that should work. All right, we got a pass and test. Um, so this is unused. I find it's always best to fix your warnings. So it says git parent module is unused. Oh, git parent modules. Aha. Cool, so we've gotten rid of that warning. Um, so the next test that we're going to do, um, probably a similar one to this. So I'm going to steal it again.
All right, so here we said print broker being created and info about other files to update for condo and QP. Um, so we're going to change this to gen subscriber. Um, and we're going to run it with just who. And we're going to say um, prints subscriber being created and info about other files to update. So it should say something about uh, creating temp conduit queue. Um, so let's get rid of all this for now. So this is not going to be what it returns, but I want to see what it returns so we can just run it and uh, see what the failure is. And the find function capture. Error. Okay, so here I forgot to import um, X unit capture IO. Alright, so the right is what we had, the left is what it actually printed out. So let's just take that as is. Alright, so I don't need that. So, one new line. And then two new lines. So, there. Um, so, it's going to say creating the folder for lib conduit queue subscribers, and it's going to say creating the actual foo subscriber. Um, and this stuff here is just coloring. Um, so this will be like, uh, let's see, 32. I forget what that is. Something like green. Actually, this will be green here. So this is probably white. And this is reset. All right. So if we, oops, if we run that again. Um, oh, we, we get a different message, and the message we get is because we're now trying to overwrite a file that already exists. Um, and the reason the file already exists is because we didn't do anything to delete the last test run. We're going to rip this off real quick. Um, basically, all this does is, um, before each test, deletes the temp directory, and after each test, deletes the temp directory. So if we run that again, um, did I not save? Let's do that again. Oh, um, this is putting it in the wrong directory. So it's sticking it under lib instead of temp. Um, so let's get rid of that real quick. Um, and I need to remind myself how I set this up to go to temp. I thought I had set it up globally for all tests. Oh, right, right, right. I remember now. And the actual code itself for the broker here, um, I use base path, which I've got to steal now. So the base path is the thing that says um, essentially where to start 
by default it's lib, and uh, in test it will be a temp. So we're going to take that, place it over here, um, where we do a git path, and instead of lib here, we're going to do base path. Okay, uh, so that looks better, and now it's using temp instead of lib. So we can update our two tests here, or our one test here. Uh, let's use the correct directory. And then that should pass. Oh, we've, we're missing a new line at the end here. So now um, we want to validate the contents of the file. So that's going to look something like uh, this. Well, so we're going to validate that the file exists, and then we're going to validate that um, the contents of the file. So let's do this. Get rid of this. Um, so it creates subscriber and expect a directory. So this is going to be subscribers who subscriber dot x. Then here we're going to pass who. And this is gen subscriber. And then generates the subscriber with the expected content. So we get who here again. Um, and we're going to read that file, which will be here. And so what we should expect is to see def module conduit queue who subscriber so that's going to use conduit subscriber and then it should have a def perform message underscore ops do in um, line message. So I'm pretty sure that's what we should get. We can run our tests, validate that. Um, oh, gin broker. That should be gin subscriber. All right, so we got no file called that. Probably that's the only one that failed though. Oh. Okay, so the difference is that there is one more new line after do here. So I wanted this to have a comment here. Um, I don't know what to write. <laughs> Writer's block. I'm just going to do that for now. So let's rerun that and we get zero failures. <clears throat> All right, so what else do we want to do here? Um, so I 
one thing I want to do is just add more documentation here. So um, I'm going to go check out the docs for mix task. Because um, it should tell me essentially the documentation I can provide to um, to basically oops, I, I didn't actually open it. Uh, to provide uh, docs for the excuse me, mix commands. So I'm going to add short doc um, and maybe some of these other things. So I'll also need a module doc. Let's go ahead and create a module doc. Um, and a short doc. Where do people usually put these? Uh, let's go look at that goes. So they do short doc first, and then they do um, the module doc, and they no doc the function itself. So I'm going to do the same thing. So this should just be at doc false. Then this should be part of the module doc. They put this stuff first. And they put short doc before that. Um, so let's do it that way. I'm going to go over that. Okay, so short doc will be. Um, generates a subscriber for messages. Okay, so I'm just going to steal liberally and then change things as they fit. So here, same line as this. Um, the subscriber Actually, I think I'm more interested in probably the Phoenix is an example for this. Uh, I don't have any of those open though. So let's go look at Phoenix for a minute. GitHub, lib, X, task. So let's look at like channel. So they start out with the command itself and then they say accepts that and then mentions which files will get generated. Okay. So I want to do my command. Do they end with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then 
accepts the module name for the subscriber. So I want command line options, um, and it's going to be a dash dash broker. <clears throat> and then we're going to say um, the broker that uses that will use this subscriber um, and then uh, we should say something about what it defaults to so let's capitalize that since we're doing a sentence now um, this defaults to um, app name q dot broker. So which one is this one mentioned so far as I were created? Um, I'll do something similar. Uh, um, the generated files will contain Oh, I should generate tests as well. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh, uh, hi, Frigid Code. So, um, when did you join? <laughs> I'll, I can recap uh, for you if uh, you're interested. <clears throat> well, I'll just go ahead and recap. Um, so basically, what I've been doing is um, writing a mix task, uh, gen, uh, sorry, a generator mix task, and it's generating a subscriber uh, for Conduit. So Conduit's a framework that basically allows you to um, uh, send and receive messages with a uh, message broker. And uh, so basically, I've defined a run, um, which you need to do whenever you implement the mixed task behavior. Um, I'm parsing any switches and args. Uh, so the command will look something like this. You can do mix conduit gen subscriber, pass a name for the module that you wanted to generate, and then you can optionally pass this flag to specify the broker module. And so I was sort of uh, writing documentation when you joined. Um, but basically, um, it takes the arguments that were passed and defaults and generates things like the subscriber name, the parent module, the path that the uh, file exists in, and then the file name. And so, um, then it passes that assigns to this function here called create subscriber. And so it creates the directory um, that the file will exist in. And so this function is provided by uh, mix generator. Um, so it creates that directory. Um, then we join the path with the file 
and then we create the file. So that's also provided by the same um, mix generator. We pass in the file that we wanted to generate, and then we use a template that we defined down here with embed template. That's also provided by uh, mix generator. It basically defines a function called subscriber template. Um, and then this is basically an EEX template that it'll call whenever um, I do this subscriber template and pass the signs. So basically everything that's in here can be used within the template itself um, to fill in the various slots. <clears throat> so then um, I wrote some tests. Uh oh. This is one problem with using uh, this OBS at a certain point. It gets a little memory heavy. And then uh, VS Code does this. It sort of is unable to render. Um, so it should come back in just a second. But basically, um, I wrote a test to test that out. Um, the first thing it does is basically um, remove and create the attempt directory. Um, and it does that because we'll be creating actual files in, uh, in the temp directory. Um, so then we're testing the run function. We test that essentially if we pass invalid arguments, that those raise an exception. We test that um, whenever we run the um, mix task, uh, it prints out the information we expect to the console. So here it's saying that we actually created the directory and then we created the file. Um, then it's saying um, that we actually created the file. So that file exists on the file system. And then here um, we're saying that that file has the contents that we expect it to have. Um, and, and that the contents are correct. So for example, here we're running the generator with foo. So we're generating a foo subscriber. Um, so I'll probably come back and add another test um, to pass this flag here um, and see the uh, behavior for that. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, so I'm going to do a test that's going to is the file then compiled and loaded into the hot application? Um, do you mean um, I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, do you mean this file here? Uh, so, um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, so I know, like Phoenix, whenever you run a generator, it does something to do a hot code reloading. But I'm not sure how that works. So I can't quite answer that. But um, I mean, if it's something that's automatically happens, then yes. Um, Uh, yeah, actually, do you know about how long uh, Twitch chat is lagging? Because uh, there might be something I could do about that. Like, I may be able to drop my um, frame rate, or um, there may be some settings in Twitch to get chat to be a little bit more real time. But uh, yeah, as far as the hot code reloading goes, I'm not sure how that works. I haven't really looked into it. Um, so I'm going to say no, it doesn't do that, but uh, maybe it does if it's just sort of automatic. The thing also with um, this library, though, is just having this file wouldn't be sufficient. Um, okay, 20 seconds. 
Uh, so just having this file itself wouldn't be sufficient to actually start receiving messages. Um, and so that's one of the things I'm going to be adding here is um, I display some info about other places you need to edit. And so whenever um, whenever that file gets created, I guess if, if you then also made all the edits and it was doing high code reloading, then you could potentially start picking up messages. Um, but I don't think that that's automatic, and so I don't think that um, that would just start happening uh, as soon as you generate the file. All right. So what I'm going to do now is um, generate this again. But uh, pass in the broker flag. So here we can pass in dash dash broker, and I'm going to call it um, just my app dot broker. So that should create a new file called temp my app. No, oh, actually, I think it should just be my app. And then subscribers, and then blue subscriber. Then this should be my app. No okay. queue. And then blue subscriber. So all that should be the same otherwise. Okay, so that passed, and we should also just repeat this assertion, because now we're creating a new file. Oops. Um, so with broker flag. All right, and so that will create my app like that. All right, so we have six tests passing. Um, so one of the things I realized is, oh, I should be generating a test file for this. So um, I can embed a template for that as well. So we're going to call that subscriber test. So here we'll do def module. Um, we're going to do the same stuff we did up here. Um, but then we're going to append test. And we're going to use xunit case. Um, then we can also import conduit message and alias conduit message. And we can also import conduit um, test, I believe. go to actually I'm in the project that has that <laughs> so I can just look it up here um, so yeah so there's this conduit test helper that's what we want to use here oh actually we want to use it so let's do that um, so we can do just use there. All right, so a test here will be described process um, two two test 
and then we can say um, returns message. So then if we call our, uh, so actually let's alias the module that we're pulling in. So we can do alias that. Um, so that'll be my app and then my subscriber. Um, so then here we can do just the subscriber dot um, run and we need to uh, who wrote the arguments right here? It's, I keep forgetting I'm in the library that defines this. Um, so here we should have a plug interface. So run expects a message and options. So let's just build a simple op, uh, message. So here we can say message equals percent message. Put body foo and um, that's good enough. So then we'll pass a message to that. And um, let's see, so we want to assert that we get back a message. Let's just do that. So then we can say, um, status app yeah so status so that'll be a simple little test and uh, this will make sure that people are sort of aware that um, whenever they define this perform it's expected that it returns a message um, so it'll be nice to just get a test that asserts that you actually return a message. All right, so let's let's add that. So where is here's this so. We're going to want to create a file. Um, so it's just going to be. Uh, actually, let's do it up here. So let's do a test file. Um, equals get test file name. And then uh, let's see what else will we need. Those are all the same assigns that we already had available, so that should be fine. So yeah, so let's just define get test file name. So it's going to be very similar to this. Um, it's actually going to be exactly the same, except that we want test and EXS here. So let's do postfix here and just default that to underscore subscriber dot x. 
we can actually just get rid of this here. Do post fix. And then um, we can just reuse get file up above. So let's just do a get file. And then our post fix is going to be subscriber s.exs. Okay. Um, so then if we have that, we can do create file. Um, let's put it in here. Uh, so subscriber test file. equals path.join and then we want to pass the assigns path and the assigns keep the spelling assigns test file then we can do a uh, subscriber test file And then subscriber test template, um, and then assigns. Oops. So let's go ahead and add test for that. Let me close these real quick. So this is testing. We're going to also assert here that file exists. Oh, actually, I realized this is going to generate the file inside of the lib directory. Um, since I'm using the same uh, path here, uh, path here. So I actually want that to be a test path. And I'll need to figure out what that's going to be. So let's do a test path. Test path. I'm assuming that because this was so similar to this one, this one's going to be super similar to this one. So let's just do a parent module. And let's go look at get path real quick. It's a good path. So the base path here was lib. Um, so we're going to call that default. Do lib. Um, well, actually, uh, I kind of want it to still be under test, though. Well, actually, so what we can do is we can do um, template here. Oh, whoops. Uh, I'll need to escape that. Okay. Should be that way. Okay, so let's do the default here. And then the so base path is going to get passed. Um, the default. Oh, wait, sorry. Bleh. In test, I am overriding this to be temp. I normally want this to be lib. So that's not going to work. Um, I'm just going to pass base path into here. I'm not going to call the function base path. And then whenever I call get path, I can use base path. Um,
like this. So how am I going to vary it for tests? Uh, let's do, let's change this to just lib path and then define another, which is uh, test path. So similar stuff there, except this is going to be test. And we're going to make this lib and this test. So then uh, we're going to change that inside of our test config. Oops. Uh, config. Ah. So we're going to make this lib path. And then we're going to add another one for test path. And since we're going to have lib and test, uh, we should just do temp lib and temp test. <coughs> All right, so with that, um, so let's go change some of our how we use git path. So we're going to say git path parent module, and then we're going to pass um, lib path. Uh, well, this one will be a test path. And then this one will be lib path. So that will get passed through. Then here we will use test path and test file to generate that. Yeah, so all that should work now. Um, we'll go run the test, I expect failures. Um, so one is just that that file won't exist because we changed this to be um, temp lib my app subscribers. So let's go to the test there. So this should be oops. Um, so I wanted this to be temp test conduit q subscribers um, and then who subscriber test.exs and then here um, that should be lib So then in the output that we're generating, this should be temp slash lib, like so. And then uh, we should also be creating, yeah, more directories and files. So. Two new lines there. Oh, just one. Uh, I should also have a backslash. Not sure why I didn't copy that. All right. Then this one, we're reading a file that doesn't exist. So it should be lib. And then reading a file that doesn't exist. Oh, 
Let's reload. Then this should be able to load. Cool. So now we're back to green. Um, I'm actually going to run the uh, mix directory by itself because test mix because um, I know that the other test was using that and now that I have uh, changed it oh so now I'm running into the problem I was worried about you running into so I'm going to get rid of this async true because it seems like these tests are conflicting with each other That's a little better. Um, now these are different, so I need to also add lib everywhere I attempt. So I'm just going to find every usage of this. And just add lib slash at the end. Oh, I've also changed the way get path works, so I need to fix that um, inside of conduit gen broker. So here I do base path. This needs to be lib path now. And then otherwise it's the same. Okay, and that resolved everything. Uh, I believe I now actually have some extra files though that I don't want. So let's remove Oh, uh, no good. Cool. All right, so now we have resolved these tests for Gen Broker and that. Uh, so now um, we added the test file, so we're going to add tests to assert. Um, that we're correctly handling that. So one was just that we have created the file. The next is that we log that we created the file. Um, so now here we're saying that um, we want to add another test here just to say that we created the right file here. So this will be a test. My app subscribers for subscriber test.exs. Then uh, we're going to add another one of these. But this is going to test the contents of the file. So it generates the subscriber test with the expected content with the broker flag. Uh, oh, there must be another one. So this one. So generates the subscriber test with the expected content foo. And here we're going to want it to say test and then underscore test ASS. <coughs> um, then similarly, this should say test. App subscribers foo underscore test exs. So let's just run that. Uh, yes, test. So 
so those two tests failed and they failed just because we have different contents um, so let's go here and just copy our template we'll paste that in and then we'll remove these and put in what should be there so this should be my app dot um, who subscriber test and then we should have this here as well and then we should have this All right, so let's run our tests. That one should pass and the other one should still fail. So that's what we get. And then the output of the other one should look basically like this one. <coughs> Except that this should be conduit Q. In each of the places that we have my app. So if we run that now, uh, looks like I missed death there. So let's run that again, and we pass. Cool. All right, so now I want to go back to here and add in the documentation. Um, so we have the short doc. So this is what gets displayed when you do mix help and then the name of the command. Um, and then we're doing the module doc, which is, um, oh, actually, sorry. If you just do mix list. I forget what the, oh, or actually just mix help with no name of command. It'll display the list of commands, and this will be one of the things there. Um, and then if you do mix help and the name of the command, it'll display this. So we're talking about what this task does, how to invoke it, um, and then information about what each of the args does, and then uh, information about what files get created. So here, um, it just accepts the module name for the subscriber, um, command line options, broker, so the broker that will use this subscriber, this defaults to app name q.broker. Um, So, um, so this will this the generated files will contain um, so a subscriber in lib. My app Q subscribers and then same thing the test. So subscriber test and test my app Q subscribers. Um, And then uh, I want to mention about how you control where the files get created and how that's tied to the broker command line option. Um, I think I want to do that on the broker option itself. Um, 
you can override the <coughs> directory that files are created in by specifying a different um, parent module. So let me do this. Okay. And all right, so we've got documentation tests. And this is oh, we forgot to do this. So let's do that. So once the subscriber is created, um, you still need to add a line to your um, <coughs> you still need to add a line to your um, what's it called to your broker. So you'll want to add a subscribe. So like in an outgoing block in your subscriber uh, in your broker. <coughs> so here I can actually use the broker name, which I don't pass through. So um, let's do broker module. And then that should just be switches broker. So here we can use that. We can say at broker module now. So this will be like in my app dot broker. So in and out going block in your my app dot broker. Um, add a um, add. And then we'll just say subscribe. Um, so we should call this name, basically. So colon name. At name. So we'll need to pass that through. Um, and then this will be the um, Just the just the subscriber um, subscriber name, yeah. So then percent equals percent. Like that, um, and then two, and then we can um, name this something like uh, so. Here we want like parent module, I think, or not parent module, but like parent path almost.
Let's put without the variables first and then we'll fill it in later. So this will be something like foo and then foo subscriber to and then let's say um, my app dot foo So that's what we want this to be. Um, then we will say um, you may also want to configure the queue um, in the uh, is it configure section. in the DSL. Um, yeah, so it's just configure. Um, so you may also want to define the queue in the configure block. for this guy. So then there would be a queue and then name of queue I would say writing copy. I feel like I'm horrible at it. And I feel like there's so much you could say because like there's so many options you can pass here depending on which adapter you're using. And so I don't know of a good way to um, like tell people, hey go check this out to figure out what things you can pass here. Um, Well, let's just go with this for now. So how am I going to get this bit? So am I passing name along? So I'm going to pass along name and I'm just going to do macro dot underscore um, switches Name. So I've got a name. Um, I want to know the app name now by itself. So it feels like I should just get the app name. Uh, yeah, let's just call it app. So get app. Um, so get app means I'm going to tear out a piece of this here. So that'll give me the app, um, and then here I'm just going to call get app. <coughs> so now I've got the app. I've got the name. And 
So then down here I can do two. And then this is going to be um, just actually. So one thing I need I do need to know is which adapter they're using. But I should be able to get that from their application config. So if I do Um, let's get the adapter, so let's do get adapter, do, and then from application, get em, um, so the application is going to be uh, essentially part um, whatever I'm just gonna repeat this for now I don't want to think about how I'm gonna pull it out so that'll be their app name and then what they're configuring is their broker so I'm going to need the uh, so I'm going to take broker module as an argument and this is a hack right now because I don't want to think if I can do module that I can cat and just pass it broker module and that'll turn it into um, the module itself. Um, so we'll get that and that will return the config and we want to from that get the keyword adapter. So that'll give us the module um, that they're using for the adapter and uh, depending on which one they're using, so we can do a case. We either get conduit SQS, um, or we'll get um, conduit and QP, or we'll get something else, um, which we'll just call adapter. And we'll return other in that situation. We'll do am qp here, and then we'll do sqs here. So let's get adapter. So we'll add adapter equals get adapter. And we need the parent module, is that right? Broker module. So that's just switches broker. All right, so now we have the adapter. We can pass that in. So the reason we did all that is because queue names vary between adapters. You can you should be using specific things in your queue names depending on what adapter you use. So dots really make sense for AMQP. Um, and uh, SQS really wants you to use hyphens between words. <coughs> So we're going to define two versions of this. Oops. So first, um, 
we're gonna do percent equals case at adapter do then the first case will be uh, AMQP so here we want it to be subscribe at name subscriber name and then we can put in the quotes um, oops. Uh, here it'll be app and then dot then at name something like that and then we can do the next case which will be SQS and that should be the same except that now we want a hyphen here and we're also going to do um, oh is there a dash rise there's no dash rise <laughs> Alright, um, let's just do string dot replace app underscore um, with dash like that. So then, in case of other. Um, Actually, for other, I'm just going to make it AMQP. So, let's just do it like this. So, we'll just use that format. All right, and so then this uh, has the same constraints. Actually, let's, let's move this up and call it QName. So get um, sure. so key name, and we're gonna base that off of stuff after here. Um, so what do we need to know here? We need to know the app and the name. Uh, name was this. Let's move that up. So let's put that here. So we've got app and name. Oh, and we need to know the adapter as well. Uh, so we can just do SQS here. And then here we'll do just underscore. And let's change this to pass that. So we'll do a key name adapter like that then we can do string this will be app uh, string dot replace uh, SQS so string dot replace app um, underscore, actually, I should just on the whole string. So let's do just app, and then dash, 
name. And then we're going to do string dot replace underscores with dashes. Uh, actually, we should replace a couple things just in case. Um, so let's do a regular expression here. So for app, we want to replace um, slashes. We should do a different character for regular expression. So we're going to want to replace slash um, and underscore and dot with dash. And then in this case, um, we're going to want to do something similar. So it's going to be dot here. Um, and then if we ever get a slash, we want to replace that with a dot. at all. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got queue name now. So we can we can actually get rid of this case statement. And then here we'll do just that Q name and then same thing here. Alright, so let's run our tests because they should fail since we are already checking for the output. Um, we are missing parent module um, in line 52. for your comma. Okay. I severely broke something I didn't expect to break. Um so it doesn't like macro dot underscore of nil, right? Right. There's no switch name. All right, so let's rerun that. Uh, ah, right. Um, so whenever I'm pulling out the adapter here, uh, this is returning nil in the particular case that uh, I'm running it. So I want that to let's do another case here. Um, after this, so case do. Um, so in the situation that I get nil, I want to raise. Um, Actually, let's call this so broker equals um, so here I want to say no adapter k 
configured for um, for a broker module. So argument error. So no adapter configured for um, broker module. And then in the other case, um, I'll actually have a, uh, a, a keyword list. Oh, um, actually, this is just getting. So it's not even just the adapter. It's, um, it's that broker module is not configured at all. Broker module. is not configured um, let's make this a longer error message just so we can give better feedback uh, so broker module is not configured um, You can configure it by doing config. Uh, I need the app name. It's so colon app. And then the broker module uh, and then adapter. Yeah. I should probably just link to somewhere in the docs where it tells you how to do this. Um, just because it varies based on which adapter you use, stuff like that. Um, it's not configured to configure your um, broker C um, then some link. Uh, hex docs dot pm slash conduit slash dot dot dot. All right, so then um, here we should have config. We can just yield that. So then, if there is no adapter, um, there should be a function of this where I can do it lazily. So keyword dot get um, yeah get lazy so if I get lazy here then I can pass a function um, for the default and that function can just raise an exception. We'll do that, and then we'll say similar things here. So broker module is not configured with an adapter. 
to configure both those two of the dots. Okay, that's a very long method now. Uh, but the gist is that we get back SQS and AMQP. Um, so if we run this test, we should just get a different error at this point. Yep, so we get, oh, we don't even have a broker there. That's problematic. How did that get screwed up? So we're trying to get the adapter. Oh, we're just using that directly. That's dumb. Hmm. Oh, it's 10. Uh, so I guess I'll stop here. Um, but let me just put a fix me so I can remember to start here. Um, so what was broken? We were broken because Oh, uh, let me maybe fix me down. So the issue was broker module uh, is new. So next time I'll probably pick up here and finish uh, this and then do some testing. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.